We are at 10 o'clock, Ed. Um, if you are ready to get started. I am, why don't we just start this right off? Okay. Welcome everybody um, for joining us today. We are going to do this informational meeting for our East Lake Park um, call to artists. We are selecting um, an artist or artist team to design a couple of monuments in our East Lake Park neighborhood here in Phoenix. Um, just some housekeeping before Ed starts. Um, we are going to be recording this meeting um, and all of the questions and comments at the end and we'll be posting it to our YouTube page um, for you to reference for information afterwards. Um, so if I could ask you to please mute yourself during the presentation, that'll help us with our sound quality for the recording. Um, and then you can reference any more information that you might need at phoenix.gov front slash arts, but in the presentation, we'll walk you through um, the project and all the steps of how to apply. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Ed to get started. And here we go. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Ed Lebo. I'm the director of the public art program at the Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture. And before we jump into the project and all those good things, I, I thought it'd be great for us to introduce uh, all the friends of the project who are on hand here to answer any questions you might have. Katie, why don't you reintroduce yourself? Hi, I'm Katie Byaris. I'm a project manager here in the Office of Arts and Culture and manage public art projects. Barry, why don't you have a word and tell everybody about your role here today? Good morning. I'm Barry Sparkman. I'm also, like Katie, one of the public art project managers, public, <clears throat> excuse me, public art project managers. Um, and today, if you have questions that arise during the presentation, you can put them in the chat and I'll be capturing those and we will answer them after the presentation. Matt, how about you? Good morning. Good. I'm Matt Itiro. Um, I guess I'm rounding out to project manager um bullpen for neighborhood services i deal with the federal funds involved in this project thank you welcome and watsna hi my name is watsna saison and i am the admin services deputy director in the neighborhood services department um, and neighborhood services is helping fund these two monuments that um, we're hoping to see in the community soon Thanks so much. Truly, I think I see you on there. Are you online? I am. Hi, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Very well, thanks. Great. Hi, my name is Truly Siloff. I'm with the Housing Department, Act Acting Deputy Director and partner in this project as well. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope I haven't missed any other city folks who may be on the line. If so, uh, shout out now. We also have uh, Jackie Berry on the line here and I'll be introducing you shortly Jackie to give an introduction and an overview of the community. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So let's just talk a little bit about this project. It's uh, as Katie mentioned, it's a great opportunity to develop two street monuments that commemorate but also serve as icons for the East Lake Park community and the locations for those sites would be at um, 16th Street and Jefferson on the southwest corner, right next to East Lake Park. And the second location would be just north of there, 16th Street and Washington on the southwest corner. Uh, this project is open to all professional artists specializing in three-dimensional artwork, uh, in durable media, and also have collaborative design and project experience because this is going to involve a public right of way and public property. It'll be important for people to understand the small complexities that go with designing for those. And with that, I thought, uh, Jackie, why don't I turn it over to you because uh, this is a project that is, um, I think, near and dear to the community's heart. And also it's a storied community and you have a very good perspective on this. And if you would share that uh, with folks online, that would be really helpful. Certainly, and thank you for having me this morning. Um, once again, my name is Jackie Berry, and uh, 
my family has been in the East Lake neighborhood for over 60 years. We're a real estate development company and we've sold and developed property in this neighborhood, um, like I said, over 60 years. You know, East Lake has a storied history that dates back to the early 1900s. And um, it, was a, it was an area basically that was segregated. Um, if you look on a map, um, just about two blocks north of here, African-Americans and Hispanics and Asians couldn't buy property two blocks north of here. And if, you, if you're familiar with Phoenix, Arizona, that's a big area. And um, so what basically what happened is a lot of the educators and a lot of the people who moved to Phoenix and all the minorities, whether it's Asian, Hispanic, African-American, conjugated in this little nine block area. Um, we had doctors, we had lawyers, there were, there were educators. Um, the, the first Hispanic church is in East Lake neighborhood. The first African-American church was in East Lake neighborhood. Many of the Asian grocery stores and, and certainly the areas where they were around the railroad were in this particular area. And um, basically it was a melting pot of all nationalities. And, um, and as time moved on, um, a lot of the famous artists who could not perform in downtown Phoenix would stay here like Dizzy Gillespie and Louis Armstrong. And a lot of the athletes couldn't stay anywhere else. They could only stay in East Lake. Um, they stayed in East Lake. So East Lake was, became to be known as just this hotbed of talent. And, but it also was, an, it was a hotbed of civil rights. Um, anytime we've ever had a situation where we've had marches and things of that nature, they started in East Lake Park neighborhood, whether it was us getting the first paid King holiday or whether it was, for, it was fighting for um, education, for, for a host of other things. East Lake Park has always been that place where we, we started it. We would march to the Capitol. We had sit-ins at different restaurants. They would start in East Lake neighborhood. So it really does have a really storied past. And what we're doing is trying to have some monuments that can not only reflect the, the, the times of the, the 50s and the 60s and some of the jazz that was going along, but also reflect the diversity of the area as well as, as, well as, as the history that, is, that, has been, that we have bestowed on Phoenix, Arizona. And um, it, it would be, you know, I'm excited I'm, and hopefully we can come up with some, some great pieces that can really reflect it because East Lake coming in is the fifth largest city, Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the country. And East Lake is, East Lake is that place you see when you go downtown. When you get off the airport, you go through East Lake. And we want we wanted to be show all the different things that East Lake is about. Thank you very much, Jack. And we can go to the next slide. Um, I know that one of the, the key things, and you touched on it, is that uh, both of these streets, um, actually all three streets that intersect where these projects are, are key arterials in and out of downtown and also north-south uh, from the airport area to um, other parts of the city. So you can see there these two stars that are sitting on uh, the map. On the north side, there is Washington Street and 16th Street. And on the south side, there's Jefferson Street and 16th Street. These locations for these, I will underscore, are just approximate because once we get to the place of selecting finalists, we'll have a deeper orientation for artists about these sites, their constraints, and also their opportunities. We'll go on to the next slide, Katie. Thank you. This first site is there at 16th Street in Washington. And this is the approximate location. And I think the, you know, the, the issue here and the challenge for artists will be to make this visible, that is the monument visible, in an area where there's, there's many other, uh, I guess, visual challenges. There are poles, there are signs, there are boxes. And so that will be something to be considered uh, once we get to the proposal stage um, after finalists are selected. You can go to the second image uh, of Jefferson and uh, 16th Street. This is the approximate location of the second site. And uh, Jackie had mentioned East Lake Park and its importance in the community. Right now, there is the Peace Public Art Project. That's the Arizona Civil Rights Memorial. And it's a, it has quite a legacy. It's be 25 years old in 1992. 
So there are other works of art in and around this park, and this would be added to that. And go on to the next uh, slide, Katie. I think the key things to keep in mind is that, um, as this morning indicates, uh, the artists will be working quite closely with uh, the community and also the city to make this project go. The budget for design is $15,000. There may be an additional small amount, less than five, for um, any kind of engineering that might be required for this project. And then if the project is successful, the de design is successful, we would fully expect to move on to a construction contract. Um, the approximate budget for um, the two but the two sites would be $150,000 total, uh, but that will really depend to some extent on what the nature of the artist designs will be once we get to that stage. On to the next, Katie. And this I'll turn over to Katie Byaris. She's done a good deal of work on our website and through our workshops uh, that are online and free to teach people how to apply if you have any questions related to that. Take it away, Katie. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through the process of how to apply if you've never applied to a public art project with the City of Phoenix before. Um, first, we always recommend that you download the full RFQ document. This is where you're gonna get the majority of the information that you need to know what this project is about and how to apply for it. Let me show you how to find it. First, you're going to visit our website at www.phoenix.gov front slash arts. And I'm actually going to go there myself right now and show you what it looks like. So this is our home page. Right now, we have a couple of links right here on the front page directly to this call to artists. And you can just click on that main screen. Um, you can also find it through the public art program opportunities um, links from the front page too. Here's your short description of the project and the contact information and then this button will allow you to download the full procurement document with all of the details um, here. It has all the links that you need um, on the front page um, including a link to this meeting that we're in right now, um, as well as um, a link for how to apply on callforentry.org, which I'll show you in a minute. So this is what your RFQ document looks like. I'm going to walk you through a couple different items in this document um, and show you important things to pay attention to. Um, so you want to make sure you download this document from our website and you want to read it, you want to pay close attention to this section one, which is a background. This is where your general project description is. There's also a section that has some more community background on Eastlake Park and some links there. The other thing you wanna make sure that you look at next is section two. This is the transparency policy. This is a policy that defines how you approach applying for a city procurement document. There are some very specific rules. So we have this informational meeting to share information with you, but if you have further questions after this meeting, you need to make sure you follow the proper procedures for asking those questions, and that is to contact the procurement officer, Romeo Rabusa, that's listed on the front page of this document. I'll share more about his contact information later, but it's we've got his information posted everywhere. We have to do that for transparency and fairness. Um, the next section you want to pay attention to is section three, the scope of work. If you are selected at the as the artist, this is the work that you'll be doing. So it describes um, actually, I think this is where the history of the Eastlake Park neighborhood is, and it also describes the information that um, will be the requirements of how you will approach coming up with the design, working with the community, um, and working with um, city um, staff to, to, to finish the work. 
Um, as you apply, an important thing to look at is the submittal instructions. We accept all of our call to artist applications online through a system called CAFE that allows you to, for free, upload any images that we need to review to make our selection um, and to uh, upload any of your documents. I'm going to walk you through how to apply on CAFE in just a minute, but we have everything outlined here so that you can go ahead and prepare before you log into CAFE. You also want to think about evaluation and selection. On page 10 of the document, these are the criteria that our selection panelists will use to evaluate your submission materials. So you want to think about what sort of images can you share or what sort of text do you want to share that shows that you meet these criteria in stage one for your first application. If you're selected as a finalist, stage two um, will be the criteria that's used in the next round of voting. Another thing to be aware of, terms and conditions. Um, this is all of the legal information that is required once you are going to be under contract to the city. Um, so all the terms and conditions are laid out here. If you have previously applied for a City of Phoenix public art project through us with the Office of Arts and Culture, you will notice that these terms and conditions are slightly different than, than ones we have issued before. Um, we have our friends from Housing and Neighborhood Services here. They are the funding partners and the um, managers of this project because we have some federal funding coming into this project. That federal funding requires a couple of different terms and conditions. Um, so it's important to kind of take a look at those, pay attention, um, and that's why our friends are here today to answer any questions that you might have if you've already taken a look at this. Um, so just pay close attention to those. And once you've downloaded the RFQ and familiarized yourself with the project, um, you are ready to go to CAFE, which is callforentry.org, and apply. Um, I'm going to actually demonstrate to you quickly how to apply for this project using an account that I set up um, as sort of like a mock-up account. So this is what the CAFE website looks like. I'm actually going to click this image and go there. You would just type callforentry.org into your web browser. And then if you already have a CAFE account, you're going to go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account yet, we highly recommend that you do this because not only can you apply for City of Phoenix call to artists on here, uh, but there are public art calls to artists all over the country that you can apply for um, through this website. And it's a great way to see what's going on all over the country and apply for more projects. Um, so I've already created an account on CAFE for the purpose of this demonstration. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And that's my login information, of course. All right, so this is my profile. These are previous projects I've applied for. I want to apply to another call. I want to try to find the Phoenix call. So I click this apply to calls link here. I know I'm going to be in Phoenix, so I'm just going to search for the word Phoenix and scroll down until I find it. It's this one here, Sculptors to Design Community Street Monuments. The other way that you can link to this quickly is by going to your RFQ document that you downloaded. And this link right here, this call for entry link, will take you directly to the application as well. All right, so then you have read this. All of this information is exactly in the PDF document of the RFQ that you have already read. Um, so if you've already checked out the RFQ, on the PDF from the website, you won't have to reread it. But um, if you haven't, it's all here on CAFE for you as well. 
We've already read it because we downloaded our PDF. So I'm going to click apply now. This is our terms and conditions section, um, which is also already in the PDF document, but it's repeated here as well. So um, I've already read that because I downloaded my PDF. So I'm just going to click agree um, and then I am ready to apply. Um, here you are going to put in a statement of intent. Um, this is really important to read the 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 tips here for applying you want to think of this statement of intent as like a brief cover letter this is what is going to tell the panel um, why you are the right person for the job in words um, and you want to make sure that you do not include your name or identifying information or a website link in this statement because if you do we have to block it out to preserve the anonymity of our selection process. Um, your resume or CV is a backup document that we will keep on hand that can have your name and website in it. Um, it will not be sent to the panelists, but if panelists have questions about your resume or CV, we can provide them with that information anonymously. Your image list, this is going to be a description of the images that you are going to upload here in this part. Um, so that image list kind of works together with this part and I'll get to that in just a second. And these are both uploadable files. So you're going to choose just a Word document. Um, I'm just going to pick some Word documents that I already have available in a folder here. Um, and upload those as a sample. Um, please note that these need to be in PDF, doc, or docx formats. Um, same thing for the image list. Um, and then the images we will upload below. Gonna... So here is your statement of intent. I'm just going to go through it real quick in the beginning. Resume or CV. Say I am unhappy with what I uploaded for those items. You can remove them by clicking on this little link. It highlights blue when you scroll over it. You can click on remove and then you can go back and choose a different file. Um, so don't worry about if you've uploaded something and you click this save button. It hasn't it hasn't fully submitted it to us. You're not stuck just yet. Um, so you can continue to go back to this form and edit it until the deadline if you need to. Um, now let's talk about images and portfolios. Um, so CAFE allows you to upload images to have already in your portfolio and then you can select the ones that you want. We need five to eight images for this particular application. So I'm just going to click my five sample images that I've put up here. And you want to make sure, of course, that your sample images are going to match your image list that you've um, uploaded here. So now I'm going to save my application. And you can actually view a preview before you check out. So I can see my statement here. There's my test. There's the document that I uploaded for my resume, the document that I've uploaded for my promo plan, and then my five images that I've uploaded. So say I've gone through all these steps. I'm happy with my application. I'm ready to check out. You're going to click this green button here. If you are not happy and you would like to go back to your entry and make some edits, just click that black button right there and it'll take you back. Um, and this is helpful too during the application pro process. Um, if you need to contact our procurement officer, Romeo, his email is right there in the application as well. So you don't have to go hunting back um, through your records for it. So let's say I'm ready to check out this call does not cost anything to apply for. So you just, when it says zero, 
proceed to the checkout. We will not be charging you to apply for this call. This is really, really important. A lot of people get here and then forget or miss the button here to submit. You are going to want to click this green button to make sure everything goes through. You still even have an item here to allow you to go back and make changes if you want to make changes, but this green button finishes the process. So this is your confirmation page. It tells you how you've applied and you are done. You can even print a receipt of this page um, for your records. So I'm going to go back to my slideshow now and proceed on and share some helpful links with you. Um, we have created a couple of resources from the Office of Arts and Culture that um, may be helpful to watch. This first one is a YouTube video that is a um, one hour workshop where we talk about the application process, the selection process, um, and how to apply through CAFE. If you want to get um, walked through those steps again, um, that YouTube um, will take you directly to that. Um, we also have a shorter video that is just the CAFE demonstration. Um, that's on our YouTube page as well. These links are also in the RFQ document, the PDF that you're going to download from the City of Phoenix website. Um, we also have a um, PDF document that is an artist's guide to the public art program. It goes through the application and selection process that we typically use. Um, and it also tells you a little bit more about our program um, and how we operate. So here's our schedule. Um, the dates that we know for sure, June 8th, last Tuesday, that's when the call to artists opens. It is open and available for you to apply on CAFE right now. June 17th, that's today, that's the information session we're in right now. July 9th, this one's really, really important. This is your deadline to apply. Um, this application on callforentry.org will close at 10.59 p.m. Um, Arizona time or Pacific Daylight time. Um, after that, the, the program locks out and you are not able to apply. So no applications can be accepted after that deadline. So you want to make sure you get your application in before then. Then these next dates are um, a little bit estimated. By July 23rd, five finalists will be notified. We will take everyone who's applied by July 9th. They will be reviewed by a panel um, of community representatives, city staff, um, and um, art professionals, and we will select five finalists to move into the next round of the project. Those five finalists will be notified by July 23rd. By the week of July 26th, those five finalists will be invited in to complete a finalist orientation. In that orientation, if you are one of the five finalists, you'll be given more information about the contracting requirements, the project itself, community information, and then you will use that information to develop a proposal. And then on August 31st, the finalists, the five finalists will come in and give their proposal presentations to our final selection panel and a final selection of one artist or artist team will be um, will be selected to move on. Um, then September and October is sort of a range of time. That's how there's a bit of time that takes us to go through our official city approvals and contracting process. Um, but we expect to hopefully have this artist under contract to work um, this fall. So that is our schedule um, and how to apply. Um, I mentioned before the contact information 
for questions. We are going to have some time for question and answers right now. Um, but if you have any questions after this meeting, please contact this person, Romeo Rabusa. Um, he's in the Office of Arts and Culture, um, and his email and phone number are right there. They're also on the front page of the RFQ, and they're on the website. Um, he will be able to answer your questions during the application process. Um, so now we're going to do q and A. I've got my big website link up there, so you can um, make sure that that's where you go back. Um, and let's do some questions. Let's open up the floor for questions. Um, let's start with asking Barry, do we have any questions from the chat box? Uh, yes, one just came in. Okay. Might the panel suggest teams of artists from the ones who applied based on perceived compatibility? Ed, do you want to answer that? Happy to take that one. Um, I don't think the panel would be mixing and matching and uh, creating a blind date out of this. So uh, do your best if you think that you you know your application would be strengthened by having collaborators involved, then I would say partner up before you apply and then include that as part of, include your team as part of the application. Is that everything from the chat box, Barry? Yes. Okay, then we will now open the floor. If you would like to ask a question, please unmute yourself and you have the floor for a question. Is there a, um, hello, my name is Esther, uh, Esther Irvin. Yes, and sir. I would like to know if there is a disadvantage applying if you do not live in Arizona. This project is open to all. And um, we know that anyone can apply and anybody can do thorough research. And I would say on that point, Esther, uh, the one thing I wanted to draw everyone's attention to is this is a, a lengthy RFQ and we, we acknowledge that, but you know, the meat of the work and the application process, as Katie pointed out, if you look at pages six through 10, they contain a lot of really solid information about the nature of the project itself. And to your point, Esther, on page seven, um, there is actually a series of reports that go into great detail on the history of this area. There's the African American History Property Survey. There's also the Phoenix Asian American History Property Survey, and then several surveys related to Hispanic historic property. These were all developed by the Phoenix Historic Preservation Office, and they contain a wealth of information, deep dive into the history and heritage of the area. Um, thank you. Um, is there um, an estimated um, installation date for the art? Not yet. Uh, we're still we're, we're focused on the design process and the, the selection process first. But as okay. that unfolds, I would imagine a clear date comes into focus. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from, uh, from friends Hi. out there? Uh, Hi, um, Steve North. Is the uh, is there a height restriction on any of the, the sort of two areas? I haven't seen that detail in the RFP document. That will be something that uh, will be part of the orientation for finalists. At the moment, we haven't uh, narrowed any of that down. Okay, thank you. The higher you go, the more foundation you need and the more subterranean intrusions you get. And so that that brings its own complexity, and that's something that all of the finalists will have to, I think, negotiate on their own. I believe there are also some overhead um, power lines in the area. We are right next to a light rail line um, at those locations, so that will probably have some type of impact in the height as well. Yep, that's a good point. 
I, I, John, John here. I take it then that the at that point, if you're a finalist, you would be working with city engineers. Well, as a finalist, you will be working with. I assume you have your own engineers you work with, but we will provide as much of the constraints and known constraints as we can at that stage. But it's really development of concept. Once the artist is selected to be contracted, once you get into a contract, you'll be working in great detail with the realities of that street and its constraints. And at that point, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, I guess, but I suppose at that point, then where do the monies go? Do those engineers, like if you're the V finalist, do the engineers, are they paid by the state? Or does that come? No, that would be it. That would be that would be on you. The artist would be responsible for hiring all licensed professionals needed to carry out the design and complete the construction documents. Okay, thank you. Yep, you are. Ed mentioned it earlier in the presentation. So our design budget for these two sculptures is fifteen thousand um, dollars. There is an additional five thousand um, or up to five thousand dollar contingency for engineering that would be required. Um, so that would be for the artist to be able to hire and pay an engineer for any sort of foundational work that would be needed. The one thing I can add, and I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but it's in the RFQ, is that if you're selected as a finalist and you fulfill the, the responsibilities of preparing a concept and presenting it and being interviewed by the selection panel, You'll be paid a fee of one thousand dollars to do that conceptual work, and that's for the five finalists. Are there other questions out there or thoughts? Friends in the city, Matt, Wathna, Truly, are there any other thoughts on your end that uh, we may want to add to at this point? Not at this point. We'll cover most of everything that we're going to do during the presentation to the finalists, but this has been fantastic. Thank you for inviting us. Great. Yeah, great job. Well, I would say those of you who are calling in from out of state, uh, please send us some cool air. We could use it. And uh, it won't get you anywhere in this RFQ, but we would just appreciate it. Okay, send us some cool air. Um, any other questions related to the RFQ or thoughts from Katie or Barry? Nothing on my end, but um, just a reminder, you can find everything you need at phoenix.gov front slash arts. And then if you have further questions, please contact Romeo Rabusa. Um, He's the procurement officer for this project. Most of the time he he will come over to us and say, how do I answer this question? Um, so you'll be getting the similar information from us as well. Well, Katie, thanks so much for your thorough overview of this. Watson, thanks for keeping us on track there. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. It's been great to have you and uh, we look forward to seeing your applications. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Take care.